Hello, my name is Johnny, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to make a lunar eclipse in After Effects. So let's take a look at the finished product. So we want to get to the point where you can control the position of the eclipse as well as the brightness. So the main thing you'll need for this is a picture of a full moon. So let's start by creating a new comp. I'll be doing mine at 1920 by 1080. Let's drop our photo of the moon in here, and for this example, I'm going to scale mine down a little bit. If you're not using a PNG file, you might want to mask around the moon, as I am right now, in case you plan to put any stars or anything else in the background later. Now for a brief astronomy lesson. A lunar eclipse happens when the moon passes directly behind Earth's shadow, called its umbra. Some light that travels through Earth's atmosphere still makes it to the moon and gives it a faint red glow. In my experience, this glow is brighter around the edges of the Earth's umbra, so we'll want to take that into account. Another thing to note is that to see the red moon, you really need to pull up the exposure on your camera, so any area outside the umbra gets way brighter when you do that. Getting back to our project here, we're going to be working with a lot of alpha and luma mats. So before we do anything else, let's create some shape layers. We'll go to our shape tool and select ellipse. Holding our shift key, we're going to make our shape layer about twice the diameter of the moon. Now we're going to want to make sure that our shape layer is centered. So first let's hit Y and we're going to drag our anchor point near the center and hold it there. While we're holding it, we're going to hit Command or Control if you're on Windows, and then let go of the mouse. Then we're going to set our position values of this layer to 960 by 540, that's the center of a 1080p composition. Let's call this layer Outer Umbra. Next we're going to add a Gaussian Blur to the layer. Let's set the blurriness to 200. Next let's duplicate our shape layer, hit S, and scale this one down a little bit. And let's set the color to black. We'll scale it down to about 70%. We'll change the blurriness to 500 and name this layer Inner Umbra. Finally, let's go to Layer, New, Null Object. We're going to rename this layer Eclipse Controller. Then on the Null Object, we're going to add an effect called Slider Control. Now our goal is to get to the point where we can control the movement of the eclipse just with this null layer, as well as the exposure of it with this slider control. Let's go down to our slider control and rename it Master Exposure. So the first thing we're going to do is parent these shape layers to the null layer. So what we'll do is go to the Pick Whip icon on our inner umbra layer and drag it to the Eclipse controller. And we'll do the same thing for our outer umbra layer. I'll set a couple position keyframes on our eclipse controller. Now, when we move our eclipse controller, you'll see it takes our shape layers with it. Let's turn off these shape layers for now and go back to our moon layer. Next, let's take our outer umbra layer and make sure it's directly above our moon layer and go to our moon's track mat settings and set it on alpha inverted mat. Now when we move our Eclipse controller around, it will basically treat it like a shadow. We're eventually going to be increasing the exposure of the moon to see the red shadow area, so we're going to add an exposure effect to the moon layer. We want it to be pretty bright when we bring the exposure all the way up, and I think if we set the exposure to 4, it's a good level for when that happens. Now we want to control this with our Eclipse controller, so let's open up our exposure effect. Let's hold Option or Alt if you're on Windows and click the little stopwatch beside Exposure. We'll now get an option to write down an expression. Now let's grab the little pick whip icon here and drag it over to the Eclipse Controller's Exposure slider effect. Next we're going to go back down to our expression and write some stuff at the start and end of it. At the start let's put linear open parentheses and then at the end of it let's put comma zero comma 100 comma, zero, comma, four. Close parentheses. This basically means that when our slider is at zero, the exposure is at zero, and when it's at 100, our exposure is at four. We're going to be duplicating this moon layer a lot, so let's rename it White Moon. We need to put a silhouette in this area so that whatever we put in the background will be blocked by it. So let's duplicate our White Moon layer, and let's drag it to the bottom, remove the exposure effect, and replace it with a levels effect. Next, we'll go to our output white and set it to zero. When our master exposure control is set to zero, we'll see black here, but we'll want to see red when we increase that exposure. 
Let's rename this layer Silhouette. So what we're going to do next is we're going to duplicate our white moon layer again and drag it down to just above our silhouette layer and we'll turn off the track mat. Let's also get rid of the exposure effect on it and replace it with a brightness and contrast effect since we're going to darken this shot of the moon. We'll set our brightness to negative 100 and because I'm using a really clear image of the moon, I'm going to bring the contrast down to negative 100 as well. Next, we'll add a curves adjustment and make this a very deep red. Finally, we'll only want to see this when the overall exposure of the image goes up. So we're going to want to control this layer's opacity with the Eclipse Controller's exposure slider we set up earlier. To do this, let's hit T to bring up its opacity and option click the stopwatch. Next, we'll drag the pick whip up to our slider control, kind of like what we did last time. Now we can stop here, but I've found I can get a slightly more realistic effect if I do this. We'll go down to our expression and at the beginning we'll add ease, open parentheses, and at the very end we'll add comma 15 comma 100 comma 0 comma 100, close parentheses. So that's the dark part of our red moon, but as I mentioned earlier, it's a little bit brighter around the edges of Earth's shadow. So what we're going to do next is duplicate our red moon layer. We'll adjust our curves to give this more of an orange look. And finally, let's take our inner umbra, place it above our new red moon layer, and set our new red moon layer to alpha inverted matte. Finally, we'll set this layer to screen and rename it orange moon. So now we have our basic look, but this image looks pretty dead. We need some extra glow on the light part of the moon. So let's select our white moon layer and our outer umbra above it and duplicate them. Next, let's pre-compose them. Now, why are we doing this? Because of how the alpha mat works in this setup, we'll need to pre-compose the eclipse animation on this layer before we add any glow to it. Otherwise, it will look pretty funky. Now in this new composition, let's select white moon layer and delete the exposure effect. Now let's go to our outer umbra layer, and as you can see, it's not moving anymore. To get it to move based on our eclipse controller, we'll need to write another expression. Let's hit P to pull up position, and option click the stopwatch, and we'll write in comp, open parentheses, and then in quotations, eclipse, close parentheses, dot, layer, open parentheses, and then in quotations, eclipse controller, close parentheses, dot transform, dot position. And now we're all set. Let's go back to our Eclipse Comp. So now let's set our Moon Glow Comp to add. Let's add a Gaussian Blur and set it to 200. I want to make this a little more intense, so let's add a Levels Adjustment before it and bring down the Input White. Finally, let's do another Curves Adjustment to give it a bit more blue fall off. Let's select the Moon Glow Comp, hit T to bring up Opacity, and Option click the Stopwatch. We'll drag the Pick Whip to the Master Exposure Slider. To stylize things a bit more, we can duplicate this layer, set it to Screen, and replace the Gaussian Blur with a Directional Blur, set it to 30 degrees and 500 blurriness. As you can see, you can get a cool flare effect here. Let's duplicate it again and set this one maybe to 90 degrees. So we're almost there, but there's one last thing we need to add. The boundary between light and dark still looks a little dead, and usually you would see some bluish leak in that area. So let's duplicate our orange layer and move it up between our white moon and moon glow layers. And let's turn off its track mat for now. Let's set our brightness to 150 and adjust our curves so we get an indigo sort of look. Now we need to make a special luma mat for this one. We're going to duplicate both our inner and outer umbra layers and place them together above the blue moon layer. Speaking of which, we should probably rename this layer blue moon. Also, let's make sure our inner umbra is above our outer umbra. Next, let's select both of them, right click and select pre-compose. And let's name this composition blue moon matte. You might need to recenter your layers and resize your comp to properly get the whole thing in frame. Finally, we'll need to adjust the Gaussian Blur on the inner umbra to 250 and increase the scale to about 98%. Now when we go back to our Eclipse Comp, we can set our Blue Moon layer to Luma Matte. 
And now we get a nice glow around the edges of the umbra. And that's all we need. Now we can move our eclipse controller around and adjust the overall exposure from it, and we're set. Now if you want to add any finishing touches, you could add a gradient on top of it and set it to screen to get a sky effect, or throw some stars in the background. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought. I know this was a bit of a longer tutorial, but it was something that I put a lot of work into on a previous project, and I'm pretty proud of it. I know it's been a while since I've last uploaded. This is mainly due to a really busy work schedule, but I do have more tutorials in the pipeline, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, feel free to give this video a like and subscribe. See ya.